bottling time. Many months of waiting have come down to this. All those videos of crushing and destemming and fermenting and racking and oaking and all that stuff has finally come down to bottling. So you can see over here, over my shoulder here, I got uh, several buckets full of uh, washed and sanitized wine bottles of different sizes. Over my other shoulder here, I got my wine. And over off to the back corner over here is my uh, little wallpaper tray with my sanitizer and siphon hoses in there. So I'm all set. I'm ready to bottle. So let's get going. The corks I'm using are synthetic. They're Noma cork brand, but they're synthetic corks. And I use synthetic. I started off with natural a few years ago, and I was having all kinds of problems getting the corks into my bottles with this cheapo uh, corker device here. And it was just de deforming the uh, corks and in, in mushrooming, mushrooming them and, and not getting them all in the bottle. And it was just a nightmare for me. When I upgraded and paid a few bucks more for a bag of these synthetic corks, uh, my problems went away. So I am 100% on board with these synthetic corks. And so, but these, uh, these corks, although they're synthetic, should also be sanitized. So what I have here to my right is a bowl of my star sand solution that I siphon out of my wallpaper tray off, off camera here. And I, I'm going to count out, uh, I think I got 30 something bottles. Uh, probably like 36 bottles, I'm guessing. So I'm, I'm going to count out 40 corks just to be safe and toss them in there. Right. There we go. So I'm just going to just go ahead and get them wet. And I'm not really trying to soak these to expand them or anything. I mean, they're synthetic. I, I just want them sanitized. I'm going to let them soak for a few minutes, like this, just like this, and then I'm going to drain this and just leave the the corks in here with, without the solution in there. And you're going to need a corker device. So this is something that was a cheap, it was called an Italian corker. I don't know what makes it Italian other than maybe that's where it was made. Um, but the whole point is, is that you um, put, put your corks in here like this, like so. And they slide down in here. And when you pull down this lever on top of the bottle, those little um, clamps grab on top of the bottle and it pushes, this top plunger up here pushes the... Uh, cork into the bottle and you use some force to really crank it down in there and it's adjustable so you so you have to find exactly where um, the adjustments that you need so you can adjust the actual throw of this thing and how far it goes in, into the bottle with these little screws up here and so it takes some adjustment to get it just right for your bottles and your effort and the way you cork them so but that's that's the basics of that these are all the bottles again I've already washed uh, scrubbed with a bottle brush, rinsed, and sanitized in star sand all of these bottles. Now, you're wondering, that, boy, that's a lot of bottles, right? Well, remember, I think I had uh, around seven gallons or so of, uh, of wine to bottle, and it's about, on average, about five 750 milliliter bottles uh, per gallon. So six to seven, let's say we got seven gallons, that would be... Um, seven times five 35 bottles right and i counted the equivalent of about 36 and a half bottles worth so i have i should have a few bottles extra and you can see i have different sizes here i have the full size 750 milliliter bottles and i got the half size 375 milliliter bottles and this is a nice touch because i can actually now open um, a smaller bottle if all I want is about two glasses of wine for dinner or my wife uh, will open a small bottle of one type of wine like, uh, let's say a white wine and I can open a small bottle of red and we could both be happy and have our pre preferred wine without having to to uh, compromise on a shared bottle for example so this is really good for that and we like this system a lot so now here is my big carboy full of wine and over here is my wallpaper tray with my sanitizer solution in it and my siphon hose. So I have this thing sanitizing. I have my, my auto siphon in here, sanitizing, connected by hose to what is uh, attached to a bottling wand, which is spring-loaded. So uh, as, this, as this tip goes into the, the bottle, it uh, releases the liquid, which is spilling all over the table here. And so the whole point is that this goes in the bottle, and it'll start filling, and as soon as I pick this up, it'll stop filling. So that's really helpful, because when you 
start to fill it up and the bottle fills all the way up to the top, um, if you didn't have the spring-loaded mechanism and try to pull it up, it'd be overflowing before you can get it out of the bottle. And it's, it makes it really hard to judge uh, when to pull out uh, the wand. So just having that the little spring-loaded stopper in there, perfect. So now I'm going to have to uh, drain the sanitizer out of here. And this is a, a complicated, messy thing to do uh, single-handedly and while trying to record. So I'm going to go ahead and do this off camera, but I'm going to have to drain the liquid out of here before I can put the siphon in there. Okay, I put the other end into one of the middle bottles so it doesn't tip over so easily. And I think the, the actual natural weight of the uh, plunger and the tubing has, has, has the plunger opened up to create the, uh, to unlock the airlock that's in here. So I should be able to just give it a plunge and let it start going. There we go. Okay, see here, I got it in this middle bottle. Uh, it's already halfway filled up by itself, but if I push it down, it'll fill up even faster. So if you just listen, well, well I guess you can't hear anything, but uh, it'll come to the top. And then I get to the top and then I pull it out, see? And the goal is to leave a little, about an inch of, uh, or or inch or two of uh, airspace, enough for, for, for the cork to fit in there. And the, and the size of this bottle of wine ensures that. See how it goes all over the top there? And that, so that's how I know uh, to not overfill it because when it goes to the top, that's when it's time to pull it up. So I, I'm going to go around and do, do, do the same thing to all these bottles. Now, as you can see here, every single bottle is full, including a couple of wine glasses I had to fetch uh, to top up those. I actually undercounted bottles. I actually had forgotten about the extra three quarters of a gallon jug that was behind the bar. Um, silly me, right? So. If I had just done just the carboy, I would have had some extra bottles, but those those bottles off to the side there are the ones that came from that jug. So uh, the rest of this came from the big carboy. Now it's time to go ahead and cork them. So now to cork these guys, I grab one of my corks out of the uh, my empty bowl here. I'm going to slide them in the chamber here. Then I'm going to go ahead and put this over the top of my bottle as, as shown here then it takes a little practice uh, especially the first time you do it each year because I haven't done this in a while is that I want to kind of cramp them together and kind of get started down the funnel and kind of get it in the mouth a little bit and then I look inside the, the chamber which, which is out of your view here and I want to make sure that mandrel the plunger is roughly center in the middle of this cork and then I just go ahead and push it down like that and that was pretty good pretty good it could have gone in a little bit deeper so what I can do there is now adjust these these uh, washers I'm sorry the uh, nuts here to get a little bit more of a push all right let's do another, another bottle again I'm gonna put my cork in the plunger the capper here put it over the top Kind of work the cork in a little bit until it seats a little bit at the top. And then I have to watch out for these bottles off to my right here, but go ahead and give it a little push down. And that was still not quite all the way in, but it's good enough. So then again, I can go ahead and adjust this some more. And give it another shot. Pull out another bottle. Cork in the corker, line it up, kind of get it pushed into the top of the opening there, make sure the mandrel centered, and give it another go. And this one was a lot better. See? So, still could tweak it a tiny bit more, but that's sufficient for, for homemade wine, right? So, let's do it just a little bit more, just like that. Okay, grab another bottle, bring it out, put the cork in, get it started in the mandrel there, in the opening, and give it a squeeze, and there we go, got it right. So, uh, it's, I mean, it kind of mushrooms up because the mandrel is smaller than the diameter thing, and this is what I was saying before about the, the natural corks. The natural corks would mushroom all over the place, and uh, these are, these uh, synthetic ones were great. 
Um, I've been meaning to get a better quality corker. Um, however, using the synthetic corks, this is sufficient for my uh, needs, so I haven't really been in a hurry to go out and get a new better corker yet, although I do wish I had one. And I'll just keep on going. Yeah, and that one went in just a tiny bit too much, but it's a little bit of variety. That's all it is. Hey everyone, welcome to Zinfandel class of 2016. Hey! Congratulations, you all made it to bottles. You are worthy. Now you're going to just sit there and wait till I'm ready to drink you. Except for you all. You all fail. This is the group that was from my a smaller jug collection, my little jars and things. Uh, for some reason, I guess they got a little oxidized. Um, it, this kind of stuff happens. First time it's ever happened to me in the past four years I've been doing this. So I'm um, a little bit disappointed. My first time this has happened, but uh, fortunately I did not blend this with my large carboy. And the carboy should be good. So uh, instead of the 2016 class of Zinfandel, you are the 2016 class of vinegar. Congratulations. So these problems do happen from time to time. Uh, fortunately, it was just limited to that smaller uh, container or, and not my uh, large carboy. So I did have to throw away some wine. Well, actually, I didn't throw it away. I still have it. I might use it for vinegar. It, it's, it's like a lifetime supply, right? <laughs> or a year supply, at least. But I got a good uh, six and a half or more gallons of good grape from this. So, so I'm happy with that. So in summary, this was the last video in my how to make red wine from grapes playlist or video series. If you haven't seen the rest of them, go back and take a look at them. But I am done with this series. I hope you enjoyed it. It was worthwhile making uh, the video and the wine, and of which I will be enjoying for the next couple of uh, years, um, hopefully, as I let this age in bottles a bit longer and, I, and as I drink them along the way. So again, thanks for watching. If you liked what I've done, please like all my videos. If you're not a subscriber yet, please subscribe. And please comment. Let me know what, what you think about my videos and uh, some of the topics and things I talk about. I'd like to get feedback from, from you all every chance I get. So, uh, so please make sure that you do that. And I'll talk to you all later. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out other videos on my YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe.